sing, see what... You gonna stand there sniffing them posies all night? I always had a powerful liking for flowers, Anna. You no know, smell left in it. Oh, Mr. Travers like that. It's wonderful how he never forgets to send her flowers. And it's wonderful the way you always got to smell them. Give them to me. And I'll put them in her room. You can get out if you wanted to. Well, I haven't seen you in two days. Well, you always find time to go out with Bill Starr. You've been on that phone almost Wait an a minute, hour. Wait a minute. Leave me alone. I've got to call up the market and get a pound of butter. Your mother and Russell will be home here soon expecting supper. Go away, will you? Those boys like you running after girls. Enough to naughty sick. Who's that old pissed Hannah? Who's that? Go and put the car away for me, will you? The garage doors were closed and I left it in the driveway. Didn't Russell come home with you? No, Bill Stead's going to meet him at the country club with a new car. Now, he'd want to be buying that, I suppose. Can you tell me what's the matter with the old car? That's the answer, I guess. It's an old one. Let us take the supper, Zach. Oh, thank you. Mr. Travers left something at the office for you, and I brought it up here. Zach, run down to Jerkin's Market and get me a pound of butter. Never get it if we're ready to get away from that phone. He's been talking to some girl every minute since he came in. It's a wonderful invention, Hannah, and perfectly safe. <laughs> well, we could for a little while. Your mother wouldn't mind if we went out right after supper and I brought you home early. Maybe you don't want to go out with me. Maybe you got a date with somebody else. Now, don't be like that. That old car, your mother's is all right in its day. But you're a college man. You stand for progress in this community, and this is just what you need. Well, I'll drop around with mother in the morning, and we'll see. I like those little lights on the fenders. We, we could say we went to a picture show. Oh, well, I'll come around your house after supper. Yeah, well, goodbye. Why don't you invite her over? Well, no one wants to mope around the house all night. Anyone I know? Mother, why do you have to go ask me a lot of questions? Don't you realize I'm not a baby anymore? Anyhow, well, there's some things I'd like to keep to myself. Of course, dear. You have a perfect right to keep your own little secrets. Well, I, I didn't mean to act sore, Mom. And I didn't mean to act inquisitive. I just wanted to know. So you're going to use the car tonight? No, but Russ may need it. I might have known that. Perfectly natural that he should have first call on the car. He's older than you. Yeah, and he doesn't ever let anyone forget it. All he does is boss me around. I'm not a baby anymore. I'm getting old. No one seems to realize that. Oh, yes. Your mother realizes it. She's getting older, too. I'm sorry, Mom. Gee, you look swell tonight. Do I? I guess you're about the best-looking mother a fellow ever had. Well, then we're still friends. Oh, sure. See, if, if Russ doesn't want the car, can I have it? Of course. Say, Mother, will you ask Hannah to have dinner right away? You're the only one she'll take orders from. Yes, dear. Hey, are you going to use the car tonight? Well, supposing I am. You've had it every night since you've been home. You might give somebody else a chance. A chance to what? Chase after Annabelle here? That's none of your business. Now, that's where you're mistaken. I know what kind of a girl she is, and you keep away from her. You can't tell me what to do. Well, I am telling you what to do, and you'll do it, or I'll beat some sense into you. Who are you going to get to help you? Why don't you two get the boxing gloves and have it out? I'll referee. Well, he won't box me anymore, because he knows I can lick him. Listen, Mother, this kid's been chasing around after Annabelle Hibbs, and I told him to cut it out. Is that what you went to college for to learn to snitch? I'll smack you right in the face. Oh, yeah? yeah? If you can't handle him, Mother, someone else will have to. There are plenty of decent girls here without his chasing after some common... Don't you say about... anything about her you can't prove. Now, Russell, don't worry about that. I know Eddie wants me to meet the girl he's fond of. That's right. Sign in with him. I'm nobody around here. He does everything he pleases. Well, I'm not a baby anymore, and I'm going to have my rights, too. Supper's ready. Come on, before it gets spoiled. Oh, I don't want anything to eat. I'm going now. Hello? Oh, yeah, just a minute. Mr. Travis, for you, Mom. Hello? 
Hold the phone just a minute, John. And put the rest of that butter in the icebox. There. Eddie's gone uptown. What's the matter with him? I just put the victims on the table. I know, but he's all upset. Go to walk with him, Zach, and see if you can't bring him back to supper. I'll bring him back. Needs a good spanking. Boy, you do a thing like that. Awfully sorry, John. I had to attend to some household duties. No. No, we're just sitting down now. Why don't you come over a little later? All right. Goodbye. Seems like that fellow Travers is always hanging around. Well, he's the very oldest friend I have. And a dear one. That's obvious, since he spends most of the evenings here and his days at the shop, anyone would think he was courting you. That isn't it, is it? Suppose it were. Mother, you're joking, aren't you? I suppose you think I'm too old and too passe for some nice man to be interested in me? Well, no, certainly not, but you're not thinking seriously of marriage, are you? Would you be shocked if I were? Oh, but why should you want to get married? What for? Well, you and Eddie are soon be leaving me for homes of your own. You want to live your lives your own way. Not right away. But you will sometime. Then what's to become of me? Gee, this wouldn't seem much like home anymore if some outsider were to suddenly barge in. It wouldn't be very easy to call a stranger father. No, that just doesn't sound right. It might have been all right when Eddie and I were kids, but not now. Oh, when you and Eddie were kids were the hardest and happiest years of my life. I wouldn't have shared you boys with anyone then. I don't know what to say. Well, I want you to say just what you feel. But try to realize, too, that my work is nearly done. And I've been looking forward to something that passed me by when I was younger. But I don't see what you want to get married for. I rather expected to look after the family and run the newspaper. In fact, I've spent four years with that in view. And I spent the best years of my life worrying and working so that you'd be prepared to do it. You forged ahead. You have a few more comforts than we started with. And I'm happy. I'd gladly do it all over again. But you're a man now, and I thought you'd understand. You'd be ungrateful. Oh, don't feel that way about it. You're just what I wanted you to be. And you're what your father would have wanted you to be if, if he'd been here. We'll forget all about it. And we'll carry on just as we've been. Till you make me a grandmother. Mother, don't be absurd. Oh, it does happen. Well, if you ain't gonna eat, I might as well put these victuals back on the stove. You'll have to excuse me, Mother. I'll just have time to get to the city. Your dinner's already. Stay and have a bite. I won't have time. I've got to see some people I met at school. Don't wait up for me, dear. Good night. You gonna eat? No, no, thank you, Hannah. I don't want anything. Person might just as well be in a lunatic asylum. My mind, Russ. It's because he's the oldest. He kind of wants to take your dad's place. Let him try and do it. You and my dad were pals, weren't you, Zach? Mm, we were great friends when your family lived back in Newton. What was he like? Oh, he was a fine man. And a mighty smart man, too. Did he enlist, or was he drafted? He enlisted. Well, that's good. That's what I'd have done. You know, someday I'm, I'm going over to France, and I'm going to see the place where he was killed. And it might not be so long, either, if Russ thinks he can give me the runaround. Now, don't you get those ideas, Eddie. Your daddy was always talking about going places and traveling. But you mustn't leave your ma. She'd take it awfully bad if she lost you both over there. I'm going back to the house. You coming? No. I got some work to do at the printing office after I finish my coffee. It's so long. Good night. Coffee and donuts. Just get off the freight? Yeah. 
And I have the money to pay for it. Pass the sugar, please. Yes, it's me, Zach. I thought you were dead. Everybody thought you were dead. What are you doing here? Traveling. You know, that was always my weakness. I never could stay in one place very long. Cordelia's here. She moved here about two years after you disappeared. She's running the newspaper. Yes. It's in the blood. We work side by side in that little shop back in Newton. Are you aiming to let her know you're here? I don't know. The boys think you were killed being a soldier in France. Yes. Yeah. They must be pretty big by now. Yes, Russ has graduated from college and Eddie's just about to start. Oh, they're grown up. Yes, they must be. I'd like to see them. That was Eddie just went out as you came in. Yeah. Mm, he's a fine boy. Takes after his mother. Yeah. Russ is helping. If, if you ain't got any place to stay tonight, Ed, you'd be welcome to come and share my shack. Thanks. Thanks. Who's your lady friend? <laughs> oh, Dad has a lot of junk like that around the house. You better look it all over and get used to it. You might inherit it someday. I'm an only daughter, you know. Now, you promised to let me do all the providing. You wouldn't hold my gold again me, would you? <laughs> no, I... Anyhow, Dad's responsible for it. But just between you and me, I don't think he got it honest. As long as you make good use of it. That's my motto. Dad, you remember Russ Tilford? Why, yes, of course. How are you, Tilford? How do you do? And this is your rival, Earl Easton. <laughs> Mr. Easton, how are you? Fine. You've relieved me of a great responsibility, Tilford. If you hadn't come along, I'd have had to marry the girl myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a future father-in-law, I'd better show some marked interest in you, youngster. We spurn your crumbs, Dad. Russ is all set. He has his own newspaper, and he's going to be editorial colossus of the wide open space. <laughs> <laughs> have a cigar. No, thanks. Where is your newspaper? Uh, Forest Park. Oh, that's a nice little suburb. That's the place I mentioned to you in regard to the water project, Earl. Oh, yes. If you talk shop, I'll scream. Russ knows how you made your ill-gotten wealth. Your bridges and your aqueducts and your dams. Now drop it. As a newspaper man, uh, you must be interested in local projects. What is your sheet? The free press. Do a little bragging, Russ, so these worms will turn and bite you and give you a couple of kicks and tell you how clever they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, women don't belong in business. They won't understand. Great field newspaper work, and you're in the right spot. It won't be long before the city annexes Forest Park. Then you'll be right in line for the big city dailies. Yes, I've anticipated that. I intend to put the free press on a new basis. Make it a daily, install modern presses, get my share of national advertising, and boost circulation. Now that's that. I said we wouldn't talk shop. We're going dancing. Let me help you with that. <laughs> Have you got a car? Oh, uh, maybe you can call it a car. Never mind. We'll take mine. Well, I know all that stuff about Rolling Stones. But a Rolling Stone goes places and sees things. Well, your stomach's out of order. You'll be all right in the morning. In the morning. Tomorrow. They're all tomorrows and yesterdays. There are never any todays around here. Oh, I wish there was another war and then I'd get away like Dad did. Honey, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, I shouldn't make you feel bad by talking like that. Yes, I'll go upstairs and read. Night. Night. There's a man at the front door. Mr. Travers? No, he looks to me like a tramp. Did he say what his name was? No, he didn't. He said he was an old friend of yours. Well, show him in, Hannah.
I can't say I'm glad to see you. No, I don't suppose you can, Padin. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Zach told me of how the boys had grown up and... I thought you wouldn't mind if I saw them. They can't mean anything to you. If they had, you couldn't have deserted them. I didn't mean to, Cordelia. Sounds foolish, I suppose, but it... it just happened that way. Have you ever stopped to think what might have happened to them? While they waited for their father to come back? No, I guess I only thought of myself. You see, when the war was over, there was nothing for me to do, and I didn't want to come back to that little hole of a town and sink into that rut and the same thing over again. I had to stay in that little hole of a town, as you call it, and provide a home and food for your boys. Yes, I, I figured when I made a success of things, I could come back and they would be proud of me. They wouldn't be very proud of you now. No, I guess not. You didn't care. You didn't think of the disgrace and the gossip the boys and I had to face. Of all the years of struggle and poverty, oh yes, there were days when we went hungry. You didn't think of the loneliness and the heartbreak it caused me while I struggled on to try to make something of them. Well, I've succeeded in making something of them, and I'm proud of them. And I'm not going to let you interfere with their lives. Well, I'm glad to see you looking so well. And those flowers remind me of when you were a girl. You always had one tucked in your dress somewhere. Well, I guess that's about all I have to say. Good night. If you don't stay out of here, so help me, I'll squeeze your ears in them roars. <laughs> you did this old thrashing machine fall apart. Get out, you little devil. I got work to do. Oh, why don't you get Russ to help you? He's running the paper now. Now you go on and go stanch. Okay. Well, hello, Annabelle. Where are you going? I have to take these to Mother's shop. Well, let me carry them for you. Oh, you needn't bother. What's the bother at all? Gee, can you get out tonight? I don't know. I got fits for staying out so late the last time. Well, if I can get the car, we could go over to Old Port and Dan. Better quiet down. Here comes Sister Hooten. Oh. Good afternoon. Well. That old battle axe would walk a mile to stick her nose in somebody's business. She tells Mother everything I do. Ed still with you? Yep. I always was kind of taken with Ed. I'm glad to have company who do me good. Reckon he's powerful sorry for everything that happened, Cordelia. You're the only one around here who knows anything about those days. You promised you'd never mention it. I wouldn't. Not to anyone. I never have. Let me know when he needs anything. Oh, I gotta get some stamps for the office. Well, give me my package. No, you wait here. Now, don't go away. Hello. Well, how's the young Helen of Troy? Oh, quit your kidding. I'm not kidding. I mean it. You know yourself, you got the rest of the local stuff knocked off the block for looks. You ought to go in the movies or something. Mother says I'm a good ad for her beer shop. You are, too. Hey, uh... How about running up the city tonight in one of the new cars? Well, maybe. If I can get away without getting caught. I'll meet you at the drugstore at 7.30. Come on, Annabelle. Just a minute. I'm busy. No, you're not. Come on. <laughs> Listen here, Silver. You're acting like a... I'm not talking to you. But you're talking to someone who's with me. Oh, pipe down, you big chiseler.
A little snipe, you could have smashed in my head with that. I'll have you arrested. No, no, you won't. Perhaps you don't know the penalty for striking a miner. He started it. No, he didn't. I saw the whole thing from across the street. You say I'm going to you. Come on, get out of here now. Come on, do it, I tell you. Come on now, listen. Come on now. Come on now. Well, thank you, Mrs. Telford. That's a splendid arrangement for me. Now, just a minute, Mr. Durkin. Well, hello, Russell. You expect people to pay you money for your merchandise, don't you? Why, yes, of course. Well, running a newspaper is a business, too. We need money to operate. Now, I'm inaugurating a new policy here, and in the future, I'll expect you to pay cash for your ads. We'll pay cash for anything we get. What? Now, let me handle this, Mother. Well, your mother and I have had that arrangement for the past ten years. I didn't think you'd feel that way about it, Russ. Well, Russell doesn't understand. Yes, I do understand, Mother. I understand that you need money to operate a newspaper. Well, that's all right, Mrs. Tilford. Don't you worry. Just cancel my ad, young fellow, and we'll call it square. You shouldn't have done that, Russ. Mother, the attic and the garage are stuck with junk that you've traded for space. You see, you allow yourself to be imposed upon. First run. Expect you'd like to see it. Now, Mother, I ask you. Mrs. Tobin, wife of our prominent dry goods merchant, has returned from the hospital. The twins are doing nicely. So they are. I saw them yesterday. I'm not speaking of the twins. Surely you don't expect me to give space to such old ladies' gossip as that. Printer's ink and pulp paper, the cheapest part of our newspaper, Russ. People like to see their names in print, and Mr. Tobin's our biggest advertiser for cash. But people aren't interested in Mr. Tobin's progeny. They want to know what's going on in the world. Well, this town is the world for most of the people living here. Oh, don't be archaic, Mother. It's only a matter of time before Forest Park will be annexed by the city. Then we'll be competing with all the big dailies we practically are now. I haven't heard anyone complaining about our newspaper. Well, I wouldn't be bringing bad news if it wasn't my bounding duty. Eddie got in a fist fight down to the post office with that Bill Sterrett. Did he win? Who started it? All on account of that brazen Annabelle Hibbs. There you are, Mother. I told you. Well, Eddie was knocked down. He threw a brick and it went smack dab through the post office window. I never heard such a crash of glass in all my life. It made me think of the time that Grandma Hooten's preserve cover... What about Eddie? Oh, well, an old tramp dragged him out before the fight went any further. I reckon a police will be arresting the two of them for the disturbing of the peace. You stay here, Mother. I'll tend to this. No, you'll do nothing of the kind. I'm still head of the family, at least on the next edition. And the newspaper might need you. Ah, sure. What'd you drag me away for? I don't need anyone butting in my business. You know, I knew you were a friend of Zach's. That's why I brought you here. If you'd stayed around there, you'd have been in a terrible mess. Here, put this under your upper lip. To stop your nose from bleeding. You're a stranger around here, aren't you? Yes. Hmm. Thought no one in this sneaky town would be helping me. What makes you say that? No, oh, my brother's a big noise around here. He runs the newspaper and everything else. Not that him in a jam one. It'd just make it tougher for me. Oh, I don't think he would. No, you don't know him. He runs our whole family. I haven't got an old man. He went away to France with the army. He didn't ever come home. I wish he had. He was a regular guy. So Mom says. He wouldn't mind a little scrap. He went places and did things. Well, I know what I'm going to do. What? I'm not going to stick around this rotten place. I can take care of myself. No one needs to worry about me anymore. I'm going to hit the road. No, oh, no, you're not. Why shouldn't I? Nobody cares what I do. Oh, yes, your mother cares. She'd want you to stick and see things through. You don't know anything about the spot I'm on. Well, I know you're going to be sorry if you run away. What are you worrying about me for? I'm thinking about your dad. You said he was a soldier. Supposing he'd run away. Suppose he was a quitter. Well, he wasn't. Well, he wouldn't want his son to be with him. No. All right. I guess not. He want him to stick and fight. No matter how tough it seems. Don't you think he would? Hey, 
common strike. Well, what do you want me to do? And your swell friends? Now, you to me, or else you'll have... what, Wilson? Well, there are schools where you can be taught to respect this. I think I'm still capable of deciding what's good for my family. Well, this brat's a splendid example of it. I'd rather live anywhere than under the same roof with you. I don't care if I set eyes on you again. What about me, dear? Well, it isn't you, Mom, but... Oh, I didn't mean to get in that scrap. I saw Sterrett getting familiar with Annabelle. And I got sore. I understand, dear. I'll do anything you want me to do. All right, dear. We'll talk about it later. If you ask me... I'm going to ask you a few things. Who are the Winthrop's? Well, I've told you that they were people I met at school. But you never told me their names before. Is it Stephen Winthrop's daughter? Yes, it is. You see, Mother, I've been meaning to tell you this. We're engaged. I hope you approve. I can't approve or condemn. I've never met her. I didn't want to bring her down here till I had things well started on the paper. To be quite frank, I, I was rather embarrassed. About what? Well, I didn't want her to know what a dinky little sheet we were running down here. You know, it's quite a come down after editing the college paper. Is that why you didn't want me to meet the girl you're going to marry? Oh, now, Mother, please don't make this a personal thing. It isn't that, but you must realize that our paper is behind the times. It's passe. Is it? See, Mother, there's a, a great field in newspaper work, but the free press has got to be developed. And it can't be helped if you're going to cling to a lot of antiquated ideas. Do you think I'm interfering with your progress, Russ? Well, I can't be tied to your apron strings. This is a man's work. Being a woman, you probably can't understand some of the things that are expected of one in the business world. What do you suggest? Well, uh, I'd like to expand. There's no reason why we shouldn't publish a daily sheet. It'd be a paper we could be proud of. I don't think they'd stand that here, Russ. This is a small community, and they're intolerant of sudden changes. Well, then let's forget it. But you're the one who always urged me to be ambitious. All I've ever heard was about father and grandfather being newspaper men. But this isn't a matter of sentiment, it's business. I have to make a place for myself and the girl I'm going to marry. Would you be happy here, Russ, if you could do that? Well, that's what I've been talking about. All right. The free press is yours to do with as you please. Thanks, Mother. I didn't mean to be brusque, but we just had to have an understanding. Yes, and now we understand each other. Well, I'm going to get to the office now and do a little figuring. Yes? This is calling you, Mr. Gilbert. Oh. Hello, dear. Just saw the first edition. Local boy makes good. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, darling. How did your father like it? I'll let him tell you. Well, Russell, it's quite an achievement. I wish you a lot of luck. Stop broadcasting. I called him up for my own special interest. Go away. Now, let's talk about me. You're saving the 18th, aren't you? I'm saving every night. Why the 18th, especially? I didn't think you'd forget that. It's the date I expect to announce you're taking me for better or worse. And uh, why not bring your mother up? Well, well, we'll see. I'm coming up to enroll Eddie in school this evening, and I'll drop in and see you. Are you sure you haven't forgotten anything? No, I got everything. You did not. You forgot your goloshes. Oh, fellas, don't wear those things at school anymore. You better take them with you, dear. You treat me like I was a baby. You still like your molasses and gingerbread the same as you did when you were a baby. Want to get pneumonia and cause you more worries. Ain't your brother enough? Bunch right up to school with me. No, you go along and pick up Russell at the office. He'll attend to everything. If I went with you, I might weep and disgrace you. Let me know if you need anything. Sure. Huh. Feels kind of funny walking out on you like this. Gee, it's the first time I've really been away from home. I guess I am still a, a baby. Yes, you're my baby. And I don't want you ever to grow up. 
Well, now, listen. Oh, I didn't expect you to understand it. But I wanted to say it just the same. I don't want you to grow up and get wiser and superior and feel that you don't need me. That's what mothers are for. Oh, cut it out. You know, you're still my best girl. Well, bye. Bye. out the window so he wouldn't have to take them. <laughs> we'll be sending them to him later, Hannah. What's the matter with you lately? All you do is mope around the house and look sad. Why don't you get up somewhere? I will. I'll go and call on some of my friends tomorrow, Hannah. Oh, I thought you were asleep. Feeling any better? Oh, yes, I'm feeling a lot better. Sure. What you been working on? Oh, just a little gadget for a typesetting stick. You always were smart about those things. I never knowed nothing but setting type and running a press. <laughs> yeah, won't even let me do that now. I guess the parade has passed me too, Zay. What you going to do with your invention? Oh, nothing. They have machinery for everything now. I, I just work on it to keep my mind occupied. Can I make it just some more hot water? I guess you might. Like. He says he's feeling better. Come on in, Eddie. Had to stop by to tell you goodbye. It's awfully nice of you to remember me. To tell you the truth, Zach, there's something I'd like you to do for me. Sure. Anything. I've got some money laid oh, by. No, no. It's nothing like that. You're the only one who can do this. Well, what is it? Well, Russ is getting Mom to run around. He doesn't seem to have time for any more, what with this high half newspaper and swell friends. But if he neglects her too much, I wish you'd write and tell me, will you? And I'll be back here plenty fast. Freddy, your ma wouldn't let anybody... Oh, I know she wouldn't let anybody know. She's too proud. But you'll know. Promise me you'll tip me off. I'm about all she's got now. Don't you worry, Eddie. I'll look after your ma. Oh, thanks, Zach. Well, I gotta be going. Hope you'll be up and kicking right soon, Zach. Thanks, son. I'll be all right. I hope you won't forget that little talk we had. Oh, sure. Oh, I know what you mean. Oh, Zach, I left my tennis racket and shoes down at the old office. I didn't have a key. Will you get them for me and send them to me? Sure, I will. Well, so long. Don't let me forget to do that, Ed. Oh, I'll do it for you the first thing in the morning, Zach. You gentlemen don't think I'd uh, back an issue without giving it careful consideration, do you? That is, that this community has suffered from ox cart administration long enough. Now, nothing personal, Mr. Travers, but we're going to change all that. We're going to catch up with the bandwagon and be part of the march of progress. But this isn't progress. It's a plot to force added expense on the taxpayer. We've got more water than we know what to do with now. It's plain graft to be dealt out to the contractor and the politician. Oh, no. No, you're mistaken. I know the men who are sponsoring this project, and their integrity is beyond question. But your mother fought this for years. My mother isn't running this newspaper now. I am. And it isn't being run on sentiment. I've noticed that common sense seems to have departed with sentiment. Now, we won't discuss my family affairs. Let's have a definite understanding, Russell. Are you determined to support this water measure against the best interests of your fellow townsmen? I'm convinced I'm right. I wish I'd had an understanding your attitude before I financed this splurge of new quarters and presses. Now that we understand you, you can do without my advertising in the future. You're making a big mistake, Russell. Miss Hewlett, send back that editorial on Travers and the City Council. I have something to add to it.
Hello, John. Come in. I was just leaving the bank when I saw you coming in here. I haven't seen much of you lately and thought this would be a good time to have a chat. Sit down. Thank you. Well, are you going to sue Russell for defamation of character or fight him with you? <laughs> oh, I don't mind what he said about me, Cordelia. But he's on the wrong track. If he continues, he'll lose the support of the community and have no newspaper. It's a newspaper. He made that very clear to me. I won't fight him, you know that. I'd rather get out and let the younger fellows run things. Feeling low? I'd like to get away someplace. And I'd like to take you with me. That's the best offer to run away I've ever had, John. All you need to say is yes, and we leave right now. You've always understood me. And I want you to understand me now. There was a time when I thought I could find the end of the rainbow. But I've waited too long. The rainbow's gone. Well, that's nonsense, Cordelia. You've sacrificed yourself long enough. The boys are grown up now and can take care of themselves. Your mother never feels that way. She always hopes that they'll need her. But they'll come running to her as they did when they tore their kites or had splinters in their fingers. And while that feeling persists, I can't run away. Well, you've told me that often enough. I ought to begin understanding it after a while. be a long winter when the thermometer drops to 30 before Thanksgiving. Yes, I guess I better be leaving before the snow falls. Edge, you ain't thinking about leaving, are you? Yes, there's something important that I have to attend to. Is there anything more I can do around here? Don't go, Ed. I need you. I don't expect I'll see the winter out. Oh, shit. Don't be foolish. Why, you're all right. You'll be up soon and around a sticking type with the best of them. No, I've set my last line, Ed. I don't want you to go away even if I ain't here. It won't be long till you won't have anybody either. You want to be near your family. You'll be wanting them, and you'll be wanting them powerful bad. I want them now, Zach. Want more than anything in the world. Then don't go away, Ed. You can have this place. It's mine. I've saved some money, and you can start all over again. I've drawn up the paper, and it's with my bank book in the coffee can there in the cupboard. Howdy, Brother Zachary. Won't you sit down? Yeah. Well, I just felt it my Christian duty to come by and cheer you up a bit. I wasn't expecting company. Uh, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm tolerable. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Now, you better be getting well mighty quick, because they're going to need you down at that newspaper office the way things are going. Oh, I guess Russell can run his paper without any help. Well, I don't know so much about that. There's folks I don't think so. I'll tell you, there ain't no normal people going to subscribe to newspapers what's chock full of murders and politics and flying stretch in the face of religion. Well, I didn't know that anybody had a copyright on religion. Why, Zach, the idea. I see nothing here to warrant my increasing your credit. I realize the report isn't very favorable, but you must appreciate that I've expanded and it takes money to get started. It didn't warrant it. Your advertising and circulation have dropped off even the last three months. Well, any new venture runs into certain difficulties. Yeah, but you've multiplied yours. Now, I'm not criticizing just for the fun of butting in. But as your banker, I have the privilege of saying a few things. I financed your new deal because I knew your mother had the support of this community. And I expected the paper to remain under her guidance. That's a family matter, Mr. Graham. Well, it's too bad it didn't remain so. 
You've run this new sheet by yourself. You've run to the end of your rope. You've failed. You mean I, I'm not to expect any more support from you? You still have one solution. What? The old shop is standing idle. Go back to it. Start over again on a semi-weekly basis and win back your townspeople by understanding them. Oh, no. No, I couldn't go back to the old shop. Why, well, that would mean a victory for everyone who's opposed me. Oh, a victory for yourself. Why, well, I'd be the first one to help you. No, I don't like that solution. Well, the only other one, then, is more credit. And I shall insist on more collateral if you get it from me. Mm -hmm, well, give me a little time. I'll figure some way out of this. It's pretty cold here at school, so I guess you'd better send me my long woolen ones and the overshoes. If I can get high credits this month, I can leave to come home for your birthday. But maybe you'd better not expect me. Anyhow, I made the football squad. Football? Hmm. Might get his neck broken. Oh, I'd love to see him in his uniform. Looked the same as all the rest, I expect. If you saw them all together, you wouldn't know which one was your own. <laughs> Now, who could be that bothering us this time of night? Oh, hello, Annabelle. Come in. Would you give this to Mrs. Tilton? She's been so nice to me, I wanted to do something for her, and I couldn't think of anything else. Thank you, dear. She likes flowers. We haven't had any around here for such a long time. Why, Annabelle, how do you do? How do you do? How nice of you to come and call on me. She brought you this. Oh, I'm lovely. How's your mother, dear? Just fine, thank you. Have you heard from Eddie lately? Yes. I had a letter to do. Did he mention me? I I was hoping he might. Yes, he did. He said to be sure and give you his best. Oh, gee, did he? He didn't say nothing like that in it when you read it to me. Oh, that was a private part of the letter just for Miss Annabelle. I couldn't read that to you, Anna. I wish you'd tell Eddie when you liked it. I'm standing hard and I'm going to be somebody. I didn't know how much I liked you, so just wait. Suppose you write me telling yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. May I see you just a minute, Mother? Well, I I'll be going. Goodbye, dear. Come sometime and stay and have a nice visit. All right, I will. Thank you so much for the flowers. Bye. Goodbye. What did she want? She stopped in on her way home from school to bring me some flowers. My well, school was over hours ago. Oh, but in the morning she helps her mother, and she's taking a business course at night. I like her very much. Now, dear, how can I help you? Graham has shut down on my credit. I don't think I understand. Well, I haven't much time to explain, but the newspaper hasn't been doing very well lately, and Graham and I don't agree about politics, so I'm afraid I'll have to ask you for a little help. All right, dear. I'll be glad to help you. I'll see Graham in the morning. Oh, no, no. I don't want you to do that. Then he'd know that he'd beaten me and that you were fighting my battles for me. Well, what can I do? I want you to endorse these papers. But, dear, my endorsement isn't any good. You see, you own this house, and uh, Graham is willing to accept that as collateral. I wonder if you realize what you're saying. Well, it'd only be temporary. Of course, if you won't stand by me, all right. I don't want to argue with you. This is all I've got. It's a security I struggled for when you and Eddie were children. It's my accomplishment, my pride. Well, what about my pride? Do you want to see me humbled in front of everyone in this town? You know what it would mean if I failed. I just couldn't go on living here, that's all. No one will blame you for failing. If you're man enough to start again, you could go back to the little shop. No, thanks. I'm looking forward to a better future than working for my bread and butter in that crow's nest. How bad is it, Russell? We'll have to suspend publication. You know, you can't run a paper without money. I did at times. For 12 years, the free press never missed an issue. Well, you'll see its obituary on the front page tomorrow. That is, unless you're willing to help. What do you want me to sign?
Anybody know what kind of iron is used to make sausage? <laughs> that answer wasn't in the book I studied. Well, I have the food. You might get mangled in the rush. <laughs> oh, and say, Benny wants to know what kind of iron you put in sausages. Any of you know? Pig iron. Oh, oh come on. You'll get a medal for that. <laughs> You love me? Mm-hmm. With all the answers, including yes. It's too bad your mother didn't come over so she could hear Dad broadcast uh, our betrothal. Any mother wants to know what sort of a siren is taking her boy. Well, you I see, know I shall. You see, Mother doesn't like parties very much. She's rather quiet. Well, then I'll go and visit her. I want her to tell me what a little brat you are, so I'll be prepared. Oh, well, now look here, Diana. Oh, I, I won't smoke or use slang. I want her to like me. Oh, Mother doesn't mind smoking or using slang. She's very modern. Well, then you should have brought her. Maybe she can teach me some new stuff. What's that doing alongside of Russell's place? It's a gift for him. What are you giving him a present for on your birthday? Fair exchange, Hannah. Well, I guess he ain't going to give you one, or he'd be here by now. And he called the police? No, of course not. He fixed up a nice party for him, and he forgets all about it. Oh, no. He's been detained on something important somewhere. A supper spoiled now. That ain't him. He always uses his key. It's that same old tramp that was here once before. He wants to see you. I'm sorry to bother you, Peter, but there's something I have to tell you. What is it, Ed? Zach just died an hour ago. Poor Zach. He was such a nice man. Yes, he was. I did everything I could. Would you mind taking care of the rest of the arrangements? Why, if you'd wish it to be you, certainly. I know. He'd have liked that. I hope you don't mind if I, if I wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. Good night. Ed? Yes? Yeah. Would you like to stay and have dinner with me? Why, yes, if it would be quite all right. Of course it would be all right. Take off your coat. Hannah, you serve dinner now. You gonna eat alone? No, serve for two. There, in Russell's place. It's mighty sweet of you to be. They're all together now, Dad. You might as well say a little speech and get it over with. Not now. You better do it now. Tighten up your courage. Quiet, you moron. Dad's going to sing my swan song. Come here, Diana. <clears throat> you too, Russell. My dear friends, this responsibility has been thrust on my aging shoulders. I didn't know how many candles to put on the cake. I thought you wouldn't want people to know your real age. <laughs> the cake wouldn't be large enough for all the candles. We just used three. Now, who's that? One for Russell, one for Eddie, and one for... Well, hello, Ellen. How are you, old man? Where's Mom? She's in there. Hey, Mom. <laughs> Mama, it's the old birthday. How did you get here? Secret. I'm supposed to be in bed at school. You didn't run away. Sure. I'm playing hooky. The other fellows will take care of that. One of them let me sliver, and I drove it here in three hours. Oh, you shouldn't have left like that. Oh, it's all right. I can get back and sneak up the fire escape before Reveille. No one will be the wiser except you and me. Had dinner yet? You must be hungry as a bear. Hannah, put the food on again. Take off your coat. Where's Russ? Oh, he... 
He detained on business. He couldn't get here tonight. Hmm. Leave you here alone on your birthday? He couldn't help it. You might expect them to wash out like him. Oh, this is... Uh... Oh, I know him. Hiya, stranger. Fine, thanks. Not necessary to ask how you are. I'm fit as a fiddle and ready for groceries. I just dropped in to deliver a message to your mother about Zach. Oh, we'll tell him later. Thanks, sweetheart. Say, bring on the rest of the grub. The army's hungry. Land of Goshen. Anyone to think you're the general? Well, if you excuse me, I think I'll be getting along. Sit down. Have some of Mom's birthday cake. Yes, draw up a chair. My, but you're getting grown up. Seems to me that school's good for you. Mom, it's swell. Why don't you like the little bitty candles? I like to see them burn. I don't think you ever told me your name, stranger. It's the same as yours. Ed? Well, what do you know about that? Maybe somebody named you after me. <laughs> What's well, a good name, anyhow? Uh, wh when do you have to get back to school? I can't stay long. I gotta be back to the dormitory before daylight. But you should have some rest. Now, don't you worry about me. This is your birthday. Now, go on. Let me see you blow out all those candles at once. All right. Hey, wait a minute. Gotta make a wish first. Oh. Now, wish for something you want most. <clears throat> Good going. What'd you wish for? Oh, I can't tell you. It might not come true. I'll tell you my second best wish. What's that? That I might always have my family with me on my birthday. I'll have to see what I can do about that. Hey there. Hey, girl. Oh. <laughs> uh, hey there. If, if you don't mind, I think I'll, I'll run off to bed. I don't seem to be able to stay up as late as you youngsters. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Winthrop. Mm -hmm. It's been a wonderful party and a very happy time for me. Good night, my boy. Good night, Dad. Good night, dear. Pardon me, sir. There's someone here to see you, Mr. Filter. See me? Yes, sir. Excuse me, dear, while I see who it is. What in the world have you come here for? I stayed outside for two hours waiting for you to come out. I couldn't wait any longer. I've got to get back to school. Why was it necessary to see me at all? Because I've got some things I'd like to say to you. This is hardly the place nor the time to start any heroics. It's all you seem to care about, about your fun. You never think of anybody else. Whatever you have on your mind, you'd better say it and get it over with. I'm only sorry your friends aren't here to hear what I've got to say. I'd like to tell them what a swell fellow you are. And how you sneaked out and left Mom alone tonight. I'd like to tell them how she waited, expecting you to show up for a birthday dinner. I don't think my friends would be interested in our family affairs. Now, the best thing for you to do is to get out of here before you disgrace us both. You're ashamed of us, I know that. You're ashamed to have them meet Mother and me because they might find out what a big four-flusher you are. They might find out that Mother gave you all she had and what a mess you've made of it. And how unappreciative you are. And how rotten you've been treating her. Get out of here. You're afraid they'd find out what kind of a guy you are. Might spoil your chances to marry a rich girl. Well, don't worry, we don't need you. I can take care of Mother. And I don't want any part of you. I'm ashamed to call you my brother. You're a cheat and a quitter, and you're yellow. Do it again if you like, because it's the last chance you'll ever get. You sent me away to learn discipline. Well, I've learned it, and I've learned to be too much of a gentleman to start a fight in your friend's house. Come on, get out of here. We'll talk about our affairs later. You don't have to shove me off. I'll go. But if you cause Mother one more little heartache or trouble, I'll be back and I'll take it out of your hide. No, she won't tell me either. She's too square a shooter for that. But I'll find out. I hope you haven't been listening to that kid's hysterics. Is it true, Russ, that this is your mother's birthday? Yes, it is. But I can explain, I Diana. didn't ask for an explanation. I don't want one. I'll have another party tomorrow and call the engagement off. 
Surely you don't believe what that kid said about my wanting you because of your family position. I wasn't thinking of my family. I'm thinking of yours. And a man who hasn't any affection for his mother certainly doesn't know what love means. No, Russ. I'll look for a man first. And then I'll look for a husband. But Diana, you can't doubt that I love you. Yes, I can. I can hardly remember my mother, Russ. And I've been looking forward to knowing yours. And I will know her. I'll go and see her myself and apologize for the heartaches I've caused her. Good night. Well, it just serves him right. But I am sorry for his mother. Yes. Knocking like that on the door. There's a bell on the house. What do you want? Well, I had to put that notice up. What do you mean, tapping up your old advertisements on the front door? Hey, you can't do that. I've got a heap more important things to do than stand here listening to you. Get out of here. Come on, get out of here. Come on, get. I suppose it'll be accepted as legal. It looks all right to me. What is it you want to do? Well, is there enough there to lift the paper on the old print shop and on Mrs. Tilford's home? Well, there isn't much against the old shop. Yes, it'll take care of that. But it won't clear the home. Well, there's some hopes it would. So, could you apply what there is left on the home and give me an extension or something? Yes, I, I guess I could arrange to do that, all right. Glad to, for Cordelia. Yes, That's fine. Of course, you know, this is strictly confidential. No one will know. I'll handle it personally. What are you going to do with the old shop? Well, I... I haven't quite made up my mind yet. Well, here we are. What did you want? Well, I wanted to know if you were going to continue issuing the free press. What has that to do with you? Well, I had to know before I made my plans. Well, I don't see what good it would do to try and carry on. The easiest thing to do would be just to drop it. That's the coward's way. It seems a pity to throw away what it took your mother 12 years to build up. What do you think, Mrs. Tilford? Well, the paper hasn't missed an issue in 12, nearly 13 years. Have you thought what that means? The work and the worry and the sacrifice it took to establish that record. Now, here's a chance to show what you are made of. You can either take off your coat and pitch in and get out an issue of the paper if it's only one page. Or you can take the easiest way and slide out. And have the people say you're no good and a disgrace to your mother. I don't care what the people around here think of me. And I don't intend to stay here and be snubbed by them. You're the same people your mother dealt with before you took over the paper. And the sooner I forget about them, the more satisfied I'll be. You quit now, you're going to be sorry the rest of your life. It takes courage to face obstacles. What right have you to lecture me? Mm -hmm. I'm likely to listen to me just the same. It's your battle, boy, and you can win it if you try. I know you can, because you have printer's ink in your blood. It's all over you. You can't wash it off. You're raving like a Sunday school teacher. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, I do. And I'm going to find out just how much of a man you are. I was setting type in our little shop. Your mother's and mine. The night that you were born. She didn't whine and cry because I couldn't be with her. No. She knew how important it was to get that paper out on time to keep the record clean. She was the brave one. You had to know this, Russell. You had to know the truth. So you could see what taking the easier way out did for me. I had everything to work for. I didn't appreciate it. And I didn't want to see that weakness coming out in my own son. What do you want me to do? Get out the paper. <clears throat> don't know how to start. I'll set up the headers and you get out the copy. I'd rather you'd get out the copy, Mother. 
Isn't there something else I can do? Yes. Clean and grease that old press. And dig out every old advertising cut you can find in the place. The neighbors are going to get some free copy. Now, come on, let's get busy. I want to see Mrs. Tilford. She ain't here. She and Russell went down to the shop. Well, where is the shop? Anybody can tell you. It's right across from the bank on the main street. Thank you. I'll go down there. You ain't a bill collector, are you? No, I'm not. Hello, oh, Russell. How are you coming? All right. You better check on me, though. Yeah. Say, can that linotype man that worked for you stick tight? I think so. He's an old timer. Well, you better look him up. We're liable to need help. All right, I'll go get him. He's down at the hotel. Hello. Atta boy. Hurry up. Yes, Mrs. Tobin. Mrs. Tobin, she's the wife of the dry goods man. What again? Twins. Oh, oh. A boy and a girl. Fine. Well, telephone me if you hear anything else. Goodbye. You're Mrs. Tilford, aren't you? Yes. I'm Diana Winter. How do you do? Won't you come in? Sorry, we've never met before. I'm so glad to see you. I've wanted to see you, too. There's something I want to talk to you about. I think I understand. If Russell's been inattentive lately, you must forgive him. We've been having difficulty with the paper, and he's been awfully worried. He'll be back in a minute. We're trying hard to get the next issue out on time. Is Russell working here in the shop with you? Oh, yes. Gee, that's swell. We shan't be through until late, but we'd be so glad if you'd stay and have supper with us. I'd love to, if I ever get over the shock of Russell really working. Come right over here and take your coat off, and... It'll tell you what to do. Grab yourself a stick and come over here and I'll give you some coffee. Right. Don't you use soap and water in the newspaper business? I don't know. I, I'm just a beginner. Well, why don't you say something? I don't know what to say. You big ninny. I forgot to get all grease. Shut up, it's my dress. It was nice of you to bring these flowers, although it makes more work for me. Can't complain, though. There's been no one under my feet to bother lately. I haven't seen much of Russell myself in the last two weeks. No, he and Cordelia spend all their time at the office now. After you marry him, maybe you'll wish you didn't have to see him any oftener than once every two weeks. Men folks can cause you a lot of worry. He may not always have to work so hard. Well, I ain't got time to stay here and entertain you. I've got to cook shortbread for supper. Well, can I go with you? Don't know what you'd want to be sitting around the kitchen for. I may want to know something about cooking someday. All right, come along. I guess I'll be on my way again. I don't want you going tramping around again, Ed. Well, then I'd only be in the way. There's plenty of things around here you could do. Eddie has three years more of school, and Russell's been offered a position by Mr. Winthrop. Oh, don't let him take it, Cadelia. Russ would be better off sticking around here for a year. If I'm not around, perhaps he'd realize what he owes you. Wait a minute, I won't speak to me. Hello? Oh, yes! I did call you, Annabelle. I've had a letter from Eddie. He's coming home tomorrow for the holidays, and I want you to come over for dinner. I'm just as thrilled as you are. Why don't you come to the train with me? All right, I'll call for you. And I want you to help me plan a party that he'll remember the rest of his term. No, dear, no. Hannah's been fixing things ever since she heard he was coming home. Yes. 
Thank you, dear. Oh, I shall be so happy to have my little family together again. Yes. Goodbye.